Hello, my name is Narayan Kumar and I work for IBM in the Spectrum Storage Software Group. This is part one of the video series where I will be focusing on installation of Spectrum Protect Plus software in a VMware and Hyper-V environment. The software is simple to deploy and can be ready to go in as little as 15 minutes by installing a pre-built virtual machine that is OVA in VMware aspects and uh, VHD from a Hyper-V standpoint. It can be deployed as a standalone uh, solution or it could be also as part of your uh, Spectrum Protect environment. So if you need to integrate this Spectrum Protect Plus with the Spectrum Protect environment, then for long-term archival needs, then yes, it can. they both can work together, uh, together in your data center. Now let's look at the, uh, the Spectrum Protect Plus architecture. We start with the key components, that's the virtual environment on your left and the Spectrum Protect Plus virtual machine. The Spectrum Protect Plus management VM will communicate via API calls with the virtual environment. This is part of the cataloging process as well as backup scheduling uh, and backing up. Now Spectrum Protect Plus then kicks off a block level forever backup to the storage pool. Each backup is stored as a read-write snapshot and moves the data to the storage component. As a scalable storage pool uh, built on combination of Spectrum Protect Plus software and vSnap repository on any storage, this storage pool can run on either on a virtual or a physical server. So the vSnap server, um, when it is configured out of the box, it can be as part of your Spectrum Protect Plus server or it could be also as a physical server. In addition, if desired, you can either tier the data to Spectrum Protect onto multiple different storage options. So you have different storage options with the Spectrum Protect environment, which is disk, tape, cloud, or object. And finally, you can then use any backup image to re restore, whether to a virtual environment for recovery or to any of your multi-purpose um, use cases that we discussed earlier. With that, let's look at some of the installation requirements. From a VMware aspect, um, we support vSphere 5.5 and above. Um, yes, you would need a vCenter. So that, that's how we actually do uh, an inventory of uh, the VMs and gather all the your uh, vSphere infrastructure um, VMs. And the latest VMware tools, uh, because the guest tools are required for uh, the VMs to be installed on the guest tools. And from a Hyper-V perspective, uh, we support Hyper-V 2016. And the reason for supporting Hyper-V 2016 because uh, we use resilient change uh, tracking, which is only available with uh, Hyper-V 2016 only. The iSCSI initiator service must be set to auto start because that's the way we actually communicate to the vSnap storage within your Hyper-V environment. And then of course, if you have a Linux VMs, um, in your Hyper-V environment, then you need the guest tools for Linux VMs. Now, things which are common for both the environments, which is uh, a 64-bit dual core um, configuration machine where the, uh, the Spectrum Protect Plus server will be installed, a uh, minimum of 16 gig of memory, 400 gigs of free space. And if you're integrating the Spectrum Protect Plus server uh, with the Spectrum Protect environment, then um, you need Spectrum Protect version 8.1 and above uh, to integrate that. It's time to dive into the, uh, the deployment. Um, so here, as you see on my screen, we have logged into DV Center um, and then we're ready to deploy a, uh, the OVA file. So you would point to the, uh, the SPP Appliance OVA file, which you would have downloaded it from the IBM Marketplace and hit Next. Uh, the descriptions, um, size on the disk. As you see, if you are going to use thin provision, then it would take less space. But if you're going to actually do thick provision, um, roughly about 370 gigs uh, of uh, full space at that point. Um, you'd accept the license, hit next, uh, select, give, an, give it a name. Uh, in this case, we're going to give SPP-GA, um, select the data center where you want to actually deploy the cluster 
and then the host at the finally, right? So you would actually select the host and you would select the appropriate uh, storage in this case where you want to actually deploy. So in this case, we're going to pick up just storage one, hit next, um, leave it at that, available space, uh, the network configuration, and then the uh, in this network configuration, you would actually go ahead and type in the, the default gateway. In our case, it's uh, 9.32.248.1. Uh, the DNS, which is 9.32.193.11. And then in the network IP address, it would be 9.32.248. 164 um, and then this is v255.255.3 and then hit next so it basically now will actually give you the the summary of your configuration um, and if you want to power on after deployment you can do that uh, or you can manually power on uh, I typically like to manually power on uh, make sure all the settings are correct and go ahead and click on finish. So this will actually go ahead and deploy uh, the OVF uh, template within your environment and it will be a, a proper uh, VM at that point. So once this is deployed, you can see um, that's the deployed um, VM. You can come back here and look at do the edit settings. There are typically about five disks which are pre-configured um, within the SPP um, and uh, as I said, you know, default minimum configuration for memory will be 16 gig, um, roughly, you know, takes about four CPUs. And, um, and if gun options, if you modify any settings, you can come here and modify the settings. So this is already set up and power on and ready to go. So now that we saw the um, Spectrum Protect Plus server installation for vSphere environment, so this one will cover the for the Hyper-V environment. So first thing you would need to do is log into the uh, IBM Marketplace and download the uh, SPP Windows installer. And then once you download this, this will basically uh, go ahead and expand the virtual disks. Um, it's all packaged as part of it, so you can leave it as a, the, the default directory over here. And then go ahead and uh, expand this uh, virtual uh, disks. So once that is expanded, you'll see a, a readme file. I'll highly suggest to copy this readme file because this is basically the installation steps on how to deploy the uh, VM um, in the Hyper-V environment. So you would actually now launch your Hyper-V environment and uh, the Hyper-V management console in this case, import and click on the import VM, hit next. You would browse to the, uh, the to that directory where you had um, recently expanded those uh, VHD files. Hit next, um, basically showing you the information, the build number, and the VM name. Um, here you would you know keep it as a default and using as a used as as an existing Unix ID. Um, we would since uh, this is my lab environment and uh, don't have much. Uh, memory so I would suggest I'm going to reduce this down from 16 gig but in your real world scenario you would actually keep this into keep this as minimum requirement as 16 gigs of memory and then the network connection and then go ahead and click finish so this will now deploy the um, SPP um, VM within your environment and and then ensure that the settings are correct. Uh, and as I said, they'll have default hard drives which are all already part of your configuration. And at this point, you would just go ahead and uh, start the power on the, the VM. We're going to actually see how we can add an additional vSnap repository into the Spectrum Protect Plus management um, console. So first, what we need to do is we need to actually deploy a OVA, which is the vSnap OVA, uh, which is again available as an um, uh, virtual appliance. Also, it is available as a physical standalone, um, and this is based off of CentOS. So you can choose um, either one, or uh, we also have, um, if you're in Hyper-V environment, we have VHD separate 
um, virtual uh, machine uh, VHD disk for the Hyper-V environment. So you have a flavor, you have a choice uh, depending on your environment. You can choose whichever one you want to use. So in this example, we're going to actually use the um, how to deploy this as a OVA um, inside a VMware environment. So you would select that OVA, hit Next again, uh, just uh, showing you uh, the summary on, on the vSnap. Accept the license. And then you would select uh, where you would like to. Uh, so in this case, we're going to actually provide a name, uh, vSnap storage, and then provide the data center. Oh, OK, it looks like the name already exists. So in this case, we're going to say vSnap storage one. And then um, production, and then the host. And then you would pick, come and pick up the um, the data store where you need to deploy this. And we left, I mean, we ideally would like uh, to leave it as a thick provision just from a performance perspective. So you just leave it at that one, VM network. And you would provide the, um, the IP config information. That's in this case, 9.32.248.1.1. Sorry, that's a gateway. And provide the DNS that is dot eleven. IP address one sixty five. Then two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. Hit next, and then you'll see the summary information of um, that VM which will be deployed, and you can select whether if you want to power on or uh, so in this case, I'm going to leave it unchecked so that. So once that is completed, you see the vSnap storage is deployed. You would actually log on to the console. And once you log on to the console, you would actually uh, go ahead and create a user ID, which is required uh, for adding this vSnap storage onto the um, Spectrum Protect Plus management uh, dashboard. Once this is complete, now we um, go to our SPP, the management, and you log in and you will, and then when you log in, you will actually end up at this dashboard. Uh, to add the backup storage, the additional storage, you would actually come to the backup storage, click on the plus sign, provide the IP address, and then here we would actually provide the storage one and then go ahead and provide that and go ahead and hit save yeah. and once you save the provider was successfully registered and the next thing uh, you would do is you would actually go ahead and say initialize and at this once you initialize it uh, this would take some time and then uh, once it will be ready for uh, doing backups so that was the end of the video. This is how we actually add a, a additional uh, vSnap repository to your existing thing. So the existing um, SPP, as I said, you know, it comes with the basic storage. But if you want to, from a scalability standpoint, if you want to add more, this is how you would do it.